Ladies and gentlemen who are friends of our ministry, Kingdom Life Ministries International, you're all welcome this Sunday morning. Dr. Tiers Mligwe here. I'm welcoming you to this great program that we hear. Leaders and followers alike are saying it's helping them. That's why you see we don't close it down. It's not easy to run this program. It's costly. But uh, we keep on going because we're hearing positive testimonies that uh, people are being helped. And we're looking at the results rather than the cost. And so we welcome you to this Sunday service. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with a word I believe from God that I, I want to share with you to try to help you and to help myself, obviously, as we meditate on this. Let's read together what Jesus taught in John 15, a very familiar scripture. Verses 1 to 7, the Lord Jesus said from the King James, I'm the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he, prune, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is, with, is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Verse 7, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. You shall ask for anything, and daddy, our God, will do it. Ladies and gentlemen, while studying or looking through the scriptures, I'm seeing several things I want to share with you. And I believe this teaching will help you as much as it must help me. The Lord Jesus comes here with a picture of a tree and its branches. And he says, he is the vine. He is the stem. And God is the husband, husband man, meaning he's the one who planted this tree. He's the owner of the tree. And we are told that we are branches. So God the Father is the one who planted the tree. And the tree is Jesus. And we are the branches on this tree called the vine. That's a grape tree. Now Jesus says something interesting here. He says, guys, if you abide in me, if you abide in me, you stay. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on, right through around the clock, 24-7. The Lord Jesus said, we shall see something in you, ma'am. We shall see something in you, daddy. Pastor, we shall definitely see something in you. He says in this picture, every branch bears fruit, supplied the sap that will make the fruit from the stem. And the Lord Jesus said he is the stem and we are the branches. He says every branch reflects what the stem is all about. But there is the word abide, ladies and gentlemen. He said for the branch to benefit from the stem, it must abide. It must stay there every day, every hour, every minute, every second. Without detaching itself, and maybe for a day or two, the branch is not there, it is elsewhere. And then maybe on the second day or the third day, then the branch comes and gets joined again. That's not how, we, that's not how things should be. Friends, that's not how things should be. There is no branch that can survive like that. Now, if we look at our lives, friends, don't we see some of the times in a day where we are not in the Lord, 
We're not thinking, uh, you know, the, the, the word of God. We're not thinking the Christian way. Don't we behave in a way that makes people wonder if we are still Christians? Don't we say things that make people wonder, is this one still a Christian? If they are, why do they say things like that? Don't we behave in a way that causes people to wonder, is this one still a child, a child of God? Now, the moment we do that, it means we have detached ourselves from the main, from the main, the, the main stem. Now, I like to do some handiwork when I've got time. I like to do, use my hands and work. In my yard, I've got several trees. I was cutting the, some of the branches uh, during the week. And I, as I was doing that, I saw something amazing to me. I had seen it before, but it never clicked. It never, it never said anything to me. That you find in a, in, a, in a tree some branches that are dead, let alone bearing fruit. I'm not talking about bearing I'm just talking about being a, an ordinary branch. You find a branch is dead, but the, the tree is still alive. When I was cutting these branches, the Lord spoke to me and said, what do you see? What does this mean? A branch that is dead on a, 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 a stem, which is the mother tree, which is alive. Imagine I say I belong to Jesus. I am the branch of Jesus and Jesus will never die. He is alive, but I'm dead. How does that come? How can I be a dead branch on a living Jesus, the stem? Something must be very, very seriously wrong. Because the branch gets the sap, as I said, to do whatever it, it should do from the stem. So how do I die and claim to be in the Lord and yet I'm dead? My talk tells people that I'm not alive. My actions tells people that I'm, I'm dead like the world. Remember what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4? He said, you were dead in your sins. So here I am a Christian of a particular church. Claiming to be alive and going to heaven. And yet my lifestyle does not reflect that. My lifestyle doesn't reflect that. My lifestyle shows that I'm a dead branch. Let alone bearing fruit. And Jesus wants these dead branches that some of us are. He says you will be cut off. You'll be hewed down. You will be detached by God, the owner of the tree. And he says when you are a dead branch and you're dry, you will be cast in the fire. We read in Matthew 25 verse 41. The Lord Jesus said the everlasting fire was made for the devil and demon spirits who came up with a strike in heaven and rebelled against God the Father. In other words, they became dead angels, dead branches. When God the Father is alive, they became dead angels. And so they were cut off and they were thrown down here to planet Earth. And God said, I've prepared a fire which is called the everlasting fire that will burn forever and forever. These guys. But unfortunately, the Bible says, even the branches that are dead, they will also be thrown in the same fire. I'm here begging you. That say, oh ma'am, don't take things for granted. Don't take things for granted. God will never change from what he said. If he says dead branches are worthy to go to the fire, we will go to the fire if you are dead branches. And secondly, he speaks about branches that don't bear fruit. He said they will also be cut. Cut by the devil? No. Cut by God. No, but God is God of grace. Exactly. This God of grace, the Bible says, he will cut the, the branches that don't bear fruit and, and, throw them, and throw them away. And they will be gathered and be thrown into the fire. This God who is love. He has decided that he has no use for dead branches or branches that are not necessarily dead but who don't bear fruit. 
Come on, pastor, what's that? What is to bear fruit? To bear fruit, as far as I can understand it, it means to be genuine, real, real, authentic Christian. It means to be an authentic Christian. It means to be a very serious Christian. The fruit is what I say. The fruit is what I do. When all my talk is right and holy, when all my actions are right and holy anywhere during the week or whatever, it shows that I am a branch that bears fruit. And Jesus said, those, those branches that bear fruit, they get pruned, they are purged, so they can get more fruit and bear more fruit and please the Father. Friends, I'm afraid. We are closing the year 2023. 2022, the 31st of December of 2022. We were excited. We were shouting. We were jumping. We were uh, uh, dancing around in celebration and thanking God, which was wonderful. But have you ever thought that the Bible says before you were born, before you were created, God allotted to you days that you must live on earth? And every day, 12 o'clock, your days and my days get lesser by one day. Get less by one day. Now imagine we are on this day. We are in the, on Sunday. The second Sunday of this year. 2023 in, 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 in December. Now, every year has got 360-something th uh, days. Now, if you are in the second Sunday, there are only two Sundays left. Which means we have probably, I didn't count, but I probably we have taken out of the days that we still had, 2022, 31st December, we have taken 340-something, no, 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 300 probably, yeah, 40-something days. We minus those. Now that's a lot of days, man. Which means, if I were left last year, 31st December, with 400 years, I mean 400 days, and I've taken 340 something, isn't that fearful that it means I'm left with less than 20 days? Isn't that fearful? And if I'm dying as a dead branch, or I'm dying... I'm going to die as a dead branch or I will die as a branch that's not dead but it doesn't bear fruit. Isn't that fearful? My question is, ladies and gentlemen, why are we not concerned? Why do we still sing and dance in our churches, sing hymns and enjoy the service, the choir, the worship teams and praise teams and, I mean, doing all their stuff and whatever, depending on what you do on Sunday in your church? And we enjoy all those programs. But we're not worried that as an individual, my days are getting smaller and smaller, man. Fewer and fewer. Which means my departure on earth is getting closer and closer. Now the question is, why are we not concerned about bearing fruit? And this chapter 15 of John is a very known scripture. But here we are, we are leaders, we are pastors, we are apostles, we are prophets and all that. And maybe we're not really branches that are bearing fruit. But somehow we don't just make it as an issue. And I'm saying this Sunday, friends, when we are left with only two Sundays of 2023, why don't we make this an issue? That we look at our individual lives Forget about looking at your wife, Miss Daddy. Forget about looking at your husband, Mom. Young people, forget about looking at your parents. Look at your own personal, individual life. In that family where you are, your days have been not been put together so that you can share equally. No, every one of you has got their own days in that family. And friends, as far as I'm concerned, this is very fearful. You don't want to go to the lake of fire. And this God of love, this God who is love, this God of grace and all that and mercy. 
It is that the Bible, Jesus, the Lord Jesus says in the Bible, he will cut off useless branches. And this useless branch that bear no fruit, let alone that they are dead and dry on a living stem, they will be thrown into the fire. Now, if that doesn't scare you, I believe something is, is wrong, seriously wrong in your life. And I'm here as a pastor to say, hey, let's wake up to this truth. It's not church attended that matter. Church, attending church is not bearing fruit. I said bearing fruit, it means your lifestyle. What you say and how you say it. What you do and how you do it. Your truthfulness. Your authenticity. Being genuine all the time, every time, at work, in the taxi, in the bus, on the plane, flying somewhere. In your bedroom, say. Mama, in your kitchen. Just being right. Because you and I don't know when Jesus is coming. Not only that, we don't even know when we're going to depart from this world individually. So I thought, as I was going through the scriptures, that let's share this thought. And let me help myself, reminding myself that in 2023, out of the days that are still had in 2022, the 31st of December, I have taken away or minus 340 something days. This must be scary. This must definitely be scary. But I leave it to you. Let me close this way. In verse 7, the Lord Jesus said, guys, if you abide in me, if you abide, not visit me, not attaching yourself to me on Sunday, but if you abide, to abide simply means to stay put, to stay there, never move. He says you will ask for anything you want when you're still alive, and daddy, our God will do it. And we like that. We like to hear that, because that's good news. But friends, the Lord Jesus said, if we abide, if we abide, I repeat, not if we reconnect on Sunday, not if we visit on Sunday, no, no, if we abide, we stay there put, we can ask for anything. Oh, maybe, ladies and gentlemen, not, okay, let me leave the word maybe. Let me say, then it means that's the reason why we pray we, we, we set target for ourselves in January there in the beginning of 2023. And we ask God, do this for me in 2023. Do this, do that, do that, do that, Lord, do that. And we expect God to do it. But when he tells us things to do, we don't and we don't mind. But here is the secret. The Lord Jesus said, it is not only asking for things from God the Father in the name of Jesus by faith. There must be an abiding there must be an abiding according to Jesus. Now, we as preachers, we like to tell you that if you ask for anything, of course, Jesus said so. In the name of Jesus, by faith you shall have it. In some of our churches, we make you recite that. And after reciting, and you don't abide, and you ask, and you fast, and you cry, and you want God to run around and do your thing, it, does, it will never happen. The Lord Jesus said that those who will get what they've asked for are those who abide. Those who abide. Friends, those who abide. Those who abide. Which means those who don't abide. Which means those who don't abide. Which means those who don't abide. God is not obliged to give us what we ask for. Even if the thing we want is good. Even if it will make us happier. Even if it will make our lives easier. For instance, if you are sick, when you ask for healing, you want God to heal you, don't you? If things are not going well, what you ask for, you want God to do it. That's why you pray about it. That's why you fast about it. But it will never happen as long as we don't abide. So this matter of abiding, friends, 
If we preachers are not preaching about it so much again and again and again, it doesn't mean it, 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 it is no issue. It has got a big issue that our prayers will be answered if we abide. I suppose that, is, that should shake you. That, oh yes, if I don't abide, then God has no business answering my prayers. But we can make a U-turn. Go and get stuck again back to God. And God will not say, where were you? Why did you leave? God is not interested in that. All he wants is that we stick to him and stay there. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every day, every hour, 24-7, we're supposed to be stuck to God in our lifestyle, in our behavior, in our talk, in our actions. We're just truthful and authentic. I pray that this word, Mama, pray that this word, say. I pray that this word, uh, you as a pastor, as an apostle, as a bishop, whatever, will help you. As much as I pray that it must help me, that's, it's not preaching that must take me to heaven. It is my lifestyle. It is sticking to Jesus. It is sticking to the vine so that he will give me the sap to bear a lot of vines, a lot of grapes that will please the Father. And those grapes don't appear on the branch for themselves. They appear for the one who planted the tree. So we don't live for ourselves. We live for God. That's why Paul said, for me to live is Christ. In other words, he was saying, I live for Christ. I live to the glory of God. I live to the glory of Christ. Let me close. I suppose this word has shown you some areas which you must work on before the, the year is over, if you will still be there. Let's pray together. Dad, I want to come to you in the name of Jesus after hearing this word of God from a scripture that is so much known to many Christians. I pray God for your people who are watching and the people who are listening from the audio about this message. That God help us, Daddy, for the year closes to be what we should be. Branches that bear much fruit. And it is not our effort. It is sticking to God, which now would make that we be purged and then we can bear much fruit. I pray for this, Daddy, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Papa, for the privilege to share your word with your people. And there are only two Sundays left for 2023. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends and those who are watching, if you have never received Christ as Lord and Savior and you, you hear that you cannot bear fruit if you are not attached to Jesus and you say, I've never had a day and a time to attach myself to Jesus. How can I bear good fruit? You want, he says, without me you can do nothing. So if you want to bear fruit, you want to be right with God so that when you die, you don't go to the lake of fire, but you go to heaven Follow this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for your word. I've opened my heart. I receive you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Have the last word in my life in the name of Jesus. I've received you, Lord. I pray, God, that you help me to abide in you until you take me out of this world or until you return. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you pray that prayer, I believe you got saved. Now you need a church where you will attend, where they will encourage you, they will love you, they will hold you by the hand, they will walk with you, and accompany you to heaven. If you want to come to our church at Kingdom Life, we're just by the main road at Shflanan here. If you stay local, you know what I'm talking about. We will love you if you come. We will do what we can for you. Most importantly, we'll teach you the word and accompany you to heaven where you wish to go. God bless you as you make your own choice. See you next Sunday, the Lord willing. Bye-bye.